So I've got this uh, this gig coming up where uh, a person's put together kind of an ensemble and they want some uh, some penny whistle in it, but there's a key change part way through, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna alter a whistle. So I thought I would c uh, capture that uh, in video format to share. So the idea is to go from this tune is gonna go from the key of D in the first two uh, verses, in the third verse is gonna go up to the key of E. So I'm gonna use an A whistle. Here's my Lear A whistle. For the key of D portion, because the way it plays, the stab, the 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 whistle lick is something like this. Okay, so that's 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 it in D. Then they want to go up to E. So I've got this I've got this generation B flat whistle, right? So that, that gets close. D sharp slash E flat there, right? So I'm a half step off from where they want to get. Now generation um, whistles usually have a little bit of adhesive under the head. I already I already kind of just, you know, put a little put a little muscle behind it and cranked this off and then just kind of cleaned off the, the adhesive. That's just to hold the head in place. Uh, if you want to any of the any of their whistles, you can you can just pop the head off and then you got a tunable whistle which is handy, right? So this one, I, I really appreciate whenever any maker gives you a little extra leeway in both directions because now, instead of B flat, I can play up a bit. Oh, that's actually hitting B flat right on right now. It's a cold morning though, um, so I wonder if the temperature changes that a bit. But anyway, what I wanna do is I wanna get down to, I wanna get down to, um, I wanna get, Excuse me. I want to get up to B rather than B flat. So this one can get down to how far can I go? Let's see. If I blow soft, I can just bucket that down to an A. Let's see. Let's give it a little more length here. Yeah, that's not bad. I could have this one play like an A whistle, as it is already. So I can tune it down. Like that's that's a decent bit of. Let's see. I've got some calipers here. That's a decent bit of. Um, of distance right there uh, from from where it was set you know like from the manufacturer to be at B flat yeah that's like uh what is that about a half inch of, of, mov of movement ability there so that's a solid a whistle right there so how, how about that that's pretty cool you get a generation B flat whistle you've also got an a whistle if you want to tune down that way actually this is kind of fun to look let's just see yeah, that makes it like identical length to the Lear A whistle. Totally makes sense, of course. So now I've got two A whistles here, but I don't need two A whistles. I need an A whistle and a B whistle. And I cannot quite get this head, so that's all the way in. Still a half step under where I need it to be. I need that to be an E, not an E flat or uh, D sharp. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the whistle shorter. If I shortened it from this end, from the bottom, wouldn't make any difference. Well, it would make a difference, but it would not make the change that it is desired. Instead, I'm going to shorten it from the top. So then this, you know, the head, the point from which the air is coming, can scooch even closer to the holes, and that's going to take the pitch up. But how, how, how much shorter should I go? You know, of course, we always want to be careful with this kind of thing. You don't want to do something that can't be undone. So I'll go a little bit at a time. But figuring that that's the difference to go from B flat down to A... So what is that difference? That difference is about that half inch. Yeah, about, eh. It's a little more than a half inch to go from B flat down to A. When changing pitches, at least in close proximity, you know, from one to the next in this case, going down requires more distance than going up. So I can figure that if, to go a half step from B flat down to A took about a half inch, then to go from B flat up a half, in, uh, uh, up a half step to B, We'll probably take a little less distance to get up there. So I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna look at this one more time just to make sure I'm thinking straight. What's that saying? Me measure measure uh, twice, cut once, right? So that is if it, if it matters to anybody, that's about 15. Uh, I almost said centimeters. 15 millimeters. About 15 millimeters. Is that right? That's what it looks like. Yeah, 16. I guess 16 millimeters. And that's going to line up with the, uh, that is right between a half inch and three quarters inch. So what is that, five eighths? 
5 eighths of an inch about. So I'm going to do less than that to shorten it, right? So I think I'm just going to take it down. I'm going to take my calipers down to about the half inch mark is when I'm going to do this. And then what should I do to mark this? I do have a marker here, marker for marking. That makes sense. So I'll go my, my half inch distance. And then I'm, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna play it really safe and actually go a little bit above that fill for my mark. Because if I take off not quite enough, I can always take off a little more. Don't wanna take off too much. So, and then this guy right here, this is just a tubing cutter. If you ever work with the uh, oh, electrical lines or plumbing or anything like that, you're probably very familiar with these. This is a really cheap tool from Harbor Freight, less than $7. And it's got a wide range too, eighth of an inch to an inch and an eighth, plenty of room. That's just that little guys are just for support for your hand. So the way this guy works, I'm gonna, oh, I could probably get a little tighter first. Yeah, and I don't really need that guy sticking out yet. So I'm just gonna get this, sorry, I'm trying to do it in a way that you can see you can imagine if I had my hand curled all around it, it's a lot easier to get it set up. Um, but basically, I'm just going to tighten this guy up to here. About line it up with my mark. Put the blade right under the mark. Okay, and you don't want to over tighten this like to where you're like denting into the metal. That will kind of defeat the purpose. But basically, like the, the, these these guys will roll and, and this guy will, will kind of scratch in or like smash into the kind of cut into the metal one little bit at a time so you get it get it snug and then give it a good turn and then get it snug again and give it more of a turn and you can imagine again if I had my hand around this I maybe could could go at it a little faster but it's kind of fun to watch it happen and this makes it so it's visible to the camera too anyway or at least I'm assuming I can't quite see the oh there it is the screen of the phone is just a little bit beyond where I can see it while I'm doing this, so I hope this has all been lining up okay. So I just I give it a turn, crank it, give it a turn, crank it. That one was a, a stronger crank than most I had been doing some now. So, whoop, we're, we're, oh, yep, yeah, we're getting there. We're about there. There it goes. That's a pretty clean cut. I got a little bit dented. That is exactly where I cranked it too much. That's what will happen if you crank it too tight. So it's like... You want to just like smash in there, be like just like totally smash into it and do one crank and be done. But that's not a good idea because then you end up bending it. So it's a little bit at a time, just a little more pressure, give it a turn, a little more pressure, give it a turn. So I could have done a cleaner job of that, but that is hopefully, oh yeah, that's still definitely a good fit for the whistle head. So now I'm going to take it all the way to extreme, to its extreme. Let's see how high we got. We're almost to a B now. We're half step below B. Ooh, that's so close, so close, but it's all the way in. And so like, if if the day of when I'm playing, the um, the temperature of the room is too hot or too cold, it's gonna throw this off a bit. So I wanna give myself a little more leeway than that. And the thing is, let's check the outer extreme. How far down can I go now? Still within the range of B flat, actually. So I know that all the way in like that is still not quite high enough. I know that right now, pulled way, way out to its extreme, I'm still I'm still about B flat. So I can take a good chunk off still. I'm not gonna take a ton off. You know, again, it doesn't cost me a thing to to just do this, you know, four or five times a little bit at a time until it's just right. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more off. I'm just take about that much. I don't know, for sake of keeping a record, maybe I'll, how much is that? That is another, another five millimeters. So we're now at about, about 20 millimeters coming off of the end of this B flat whistle to try to achieve key of B slash, you know, up a fourth key of E. Oh, I got, I got off a little bit. It's kind of, kind of, Oh, it's kind of threading on me there. We don't want that. I get a little tighter right where it's sitting. Okay. Is it still threading? It looks like it might be trying to scoot up a little bit. Maybe I'm just seeing it wrong. No, yeah, it is. It's up to like seven millimeters now, which is probably still okay. I'm just gonna try to tighten it right where it is and try to keep it 
keep it there. There we go. Now we're staying still. So now we're just staying in the same consistent spot all the way around. So, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't making that very clear. I was just kind of subtly tightening as I was twisting over here. So as I'm twisting around, I'm just kind of, the meat of my hand here is just kind of pivoting around, getting a little tighter as we go. Now that we're in there deep enough, it's not uh, threading on me anymore. Uh-oh. I'm going to get... All the way around. There we go. Clean cut. All right. Oh, no, that's a much better lip. That's a way more consistently round lip. We still have a little bit of a dent there, and that might just be left over from the dent that I put up a little higher, but that's a lot closer to a good circle, so that was nicer. All right, now to the upper extreme. Oh, sometimes my tuner app does, does do that. It just kind of freezes up. Here we go. Ooh, that's about B. And I'm actually getting above E now. So let's see if I pull it out a little bit. Second octave B is spot on right there. Lower octave B is a little bit flat. That kind of not quite perfectness really shouldn't be too much of a surprise when I'm doing this like field modification to an instrument. But um, the main thing here, I'm not playing in the key of B, I'm playing in the key of E. So is that key, is that scale going to be in tune? Let's check that out. That's pretty good. I'm going to take it up just a little bit more. It's just a little bit sharp. That is pretty darn good. And so now I'm in a situation where I've got a key of E that I can use, and I know that if I need to, I can go in a little sharper. So if there's something weird going on day of, and I need to go up a bit, I'll be able to. A quarter step difference. So that's a pretty good bit of flexibility. And I'm just curious, if I take it all the way out to its extreme low end, where are we sitting? Only just above a B flat now. Yeah, I was wondering if I'd be able to pull it off to have a B flat slash B thing going on here. Not quite. Though having this, the extreme low B so close to B flat, I'd bet if I cut a little more off, I could have B at the lower end of this whistle and B at C at the upper end. I bet that would be. I bet that would be possible. I'm gonna not risk that for right now because there's a gig coming up tomorrow to use this whistle for, and so if right now I over trim it. Uh, I'd be out of luck. And so after that gig, I think I'll trim a little bit more off of this one, see if I can get a B slash C whistle. That could be really handy. But um, there we go. So now right about there. Oh, a little too high. A little bit more. That's getting in there. There we go. Now the only thing left to do is actually, where did I leave that marker? Where did I? There we go. Now we just need to take this. This is now a generation B whistle. Now it looks like it says like B1 or something. <laughs> oh well, I should have had a gold marker. That would have been cooler. So there we go. That's a B whistle. So now that key change, so I'll be able to, the whistle stabs will go from the D. excited by this because now I know that the generation B flat right out of the box can do a pretty darn well and that with a, a seven dollar tool I can turn a B flat into a a probably a B slash C whistle as well so I could have with two generation B flat whistles I could have an A slash B flat situation and a B slash C situation so I can get uh, four keys out of two whistles and that's not even counting, you know, the relative keys, the relative majors and minors that can come out of those those four. I'm just talking like, you know, tonic note kind of keys. That's that's pretty cool. I think I'm going to get another one of these and, and do that, try to set up a, 
well, this one will become my B slash C, hopefully, if I can get that to work. I'll, I'll try to I'll try to keep in mind to make a video of that in, in case that's any fun as well to see how much needs to come off to achieve um, the the C key out of this guy.